Hey everybody, welcome back, I'm doing the Album Review Guy, where I dive deep into the records that shaped music history. Today I have a short video highlighting a list of seven of the most epic prog rock songs over ten minutes ever made, in my opinion. These aren't just songs, they're complete worlds, each with its own mood, story and soundscape. So grab a cup of something strong, get comfy and let's dig into some serious prog buttons. I would advise you to stick around to the end for a couple of honourable mentions as well. A quick note on how I put this list together. Prog rock is notorious for its indulgence and let's be real, not every long track is a masterpiece. So I'm looking at songs that aren't just long for the sake of being long. These tracks stand out because they're adventurous, ambitious, iconic in how they define what prog rock is all about. Musical storytelling, compositional complexity, and moments that make you go, wow, did that really just happen? Let's kick things off. First up, we've got Close to the Edge by Yes. Now you've got to hand it to these guys. When they go big, they go big. This track, which sprawls over 18 minutes, is the pinnacle of Yes's early 70s sound. In those opening moments you're hit with a swirling cacophony that feels like the band is tuning into another dimension. Jan Anderson's vocals soar above it all with that ethereal quality, singing about rivers, mountains and, well, things are a little hard to pin down. Steve Howe's guitar work is like a mad tapestry of intricate lines. The Waitman's keys are as flashy as ever and the rhythm section of Chris Squire and Bill Bruford on this one just doesn't quit. The whole thing is a suite in three parts, transitioning from one sonic landscape to another. It's complex, lush, and it really embodies what Yes was all about, pushing the boundaries of rock music way out there. Next, let's talk about Genesis with Supper's Ready. Now, this one is epic with a capital E. Clocking in at 23 minutes, this track from the Fox Dropped album is a full-blown journey through multiple sections each with its own distinct vibe. Peter Gabriel's theatrical delivery and surreal lyrics make you feel like you're flipping through some bizarre storybook. One minute, you're in a pastoral English countryside and the next you're thrust into chaotic vision of apocalypse. That centrepiece, Apocalypse in 9-8, is pure prog insanity with Tony Banks swirling keyboards and Phil Collins drumming leading the charge to some of the genre's most intricate and time signatures ever. It's weird, it's dramatic, and it's genesis at the most ambitious. Now we can't talk about epic prog without tipping our hats to Pink Floyd's Echoes. This one, folks, is a masterpiece of atmosphere and mood. The band recorded this 23 minute opus during the medal sessions, and it really sets the stage for grander concepts that they explore later on in albums like Donk Side of the Moon and Wish You Were Here. From that first ping of Rick Wright's keyboards to David Gilmour's haunting slide guitar, this track really feels like you're descending into a deep underwater dreamy. It's hypnotic, it's immersive, and every time I listen I hear something new. The song takes its time meandering through serene passages, eerie soundscapes and moments of pure rock brilliance. It's the sound of the band just hitting their stride creatively and it still holds up beautifully today. Rush fans, you know, know what's up. 2112 is a prog rock institution. It's a 20 minute suite that occupies the entire first side of the album of the same name. It's got everything that you'd expect from a classic Rush track. Virtuosity, narrative, and enough riffs to fill a dozen lesser songs. The band tells of a dystopian sci-fi story where the music is outlawed. Imagine that. Geddy Lee's vocals are the high pitch best. Neil Peart's lyrics are dense, almost like a novella. And Alex Lifeson just shreds throughout. From the bombastic opening of Overture to the dramatic grand finale, every second of this track is infused with that signature rush energy. It's bold, it's over the top, and is exactly what prog rock should be. We have another entry from Yes now, and a personal favourite of mine with the Gates of Delirium, which is, well, kind of exactly what it sounds like. It's one of those massive suites from the Relayer album, inspired by Tolstoy's War and Peace, and trust me, you can hear that conflict and chaos all over this track. 
It's 21 minutes of pure unfiltered prog madness with sections that feel like a musical battle complete with house screamy guitar solos and Waitland's dazzling synths. And then, just when you think it's all going to end in catastrophe, the song shifts gears and soon is a beautiful, hopeful melody that feels like the calm after the storm. It's dramatic, it's intense, and it's yes, but then most daring. Van de Graaff Generators, a plague of lighthouse keepers, is, well, it's something else. This band was always a little bit more avant-garde, a bit darker, and this track really is no exception. Clocking in at over 23 minutes, the song is like listening to a fever's dream. It's got everything, sudden shifts in dynamics, dissonant passages, and Peter Hamill's tortured vocal delivery, which makes you feel every ounce of the protagonist's descent into madness. The song is almost cinematic in how it moves through its various parts, each one more unhinged than the last. It's a tough listen. It's an incredibly rewarding one if you stick with it. And finally, let's talk about Thick as a Brit by Jethro Tull. Now, this one's a bit of a cheat, because it's technically a whole album-length track split into two parts, but we're bending the rules a bit because it's just too iconic to ignore. Now, the whole thing is a satirical take on concept albums and prog rock itself, which makes it all the more brilliant. Ian Anderson's lyrics are sharp, clever, and the music? Well, it's a seamless blend of folk rock and classical influences, with recurring musical motifs that tie the whole thing together. It's cheeky, it's intricate, and it's probably the most fun you'll have with a 40-minute song, in fairness. Now, what are those honourable mentions? And of course, I've got a couple here for you. There are plenty of other epics out there worth checking out. Tracks like Carnival 9 by Emerson, Lake and Palmer and Starless by King Crimson. Also, towering in achievements in the genre, but you've got to draw the line somewhere, right? So there you have it. Seven of the most epic, mind-expanding, time-bending prog rock tracks over ten minutes. These songs are more than just music, they're entire experiences that take you on a ride like no other. If you haven't given these a full listen, do yourself a favour, calm out some time and let yourself get lost in them. Let me know in the comments which epic prog track is your favourite. If you enjoy this deep dive, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell so you never miss another new video. Thanks for watching this one and I'll catch you all on the next one. Bye for now.